Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's Chris here from homenetworkgeek.com where we talk about everything home networking. If you enjoy this video and you find it helpful, it'd be great if you could drop it a like and subscribe if you haven't already. We're going to be doing something a little bit different today and unbox the AV600 Wi-Fi Powerline Kit from TP-Link. I'll then show you how to set it all up and we'll test it out, so it'll be pretty interesting to see the results at the end. Now if you're not familiar with how Powerline Networking works, it essentially makes use of the electrical wiring found within the walls of your home to provide you with an ethernet connection. And in this case with the AV600 kit, Wi-Fi as well. So let's get started and take a look at the box itself. On the front of the packaging we see the power line adapters themselves along with a few key facts including how it works with all broadband providers and supports speeds of up to 300 megabits per second on Wi-Fi. On one of the sides there is a diagram to show how a power line network needs to be set up to function, a list of the contents of the package and a QR code which you can scan to get the TP-Link app. So on the other side we have another picture of the adapters themselves but with annotations so you know what each of the buttons and ports is there for. Also listed is the specifications including the standards the adapters meet, their physical dimensions, the security protocols that they use and the range you can expect them to work across. And finally on the back of the box you'll see how the adapters can use your existing SSID and password and how any settings that are changed will automatically get applied across the network. There is also a picture of a home to again show how Powerline networking actually works. So that's a quick look at the box itself. Now let's get unboxed and see what's inside. Okay, so the first thing you'll see is a few pieces of paper including a quick installation guide. Hopefully you won't need to refer to this as I'll show you how to set it all up in this video. Next we have the smaller of the two adapters. This is the one that is connected to your router using an ethernet cable. Then we have the larger adapter which will need to be placed where you're looking to connect a device using ethernet or to extend your existing Wi-Fi coverage. And finally we have two ethernet cables which both look to be pretty decent in length but the printed text on the jacket doesn't seem to say which category of cable it is, not that it really matters. So that's everything inside the box, along with a piece of cardboard to hold it all in place. Now let's get it all set up and see how it actually works. Okay, so the first step is to take an ethernet cable, plug one end into one of the available LAN ports found on the back of your router, and then take the other end of the cable and plug it into the ethernet port found on the small adapter. Next plug both of the adapters into a mains outlet in the same room. This is really just for convenience while we're setting up and we can move the larger adapter later. Ideally you plug both of them into their own power outlets but if you need to use an extension cord at this time it's not the end of the world. The next step is to pair both power line adapters. Press the pair button found on the front of the smaller adapter for one second until the LED light starts to blink. Now within two minutes of pressing the pair button on the smaller adapter, press the pair button that's found on the bottom of the larger adapter again for one second. The power LED light should start to blink just as it did on the smaller adapter. When the power line LED light remains on, this means the power line adapters are talking to each other and the power line network has been established. The final step is to move the larger adapter to wherever you need it, whether that's to provide a device with an ethernet connection or to provide Wi-Fi coverage where it previously wasn't possible. If you're wanting to use Wi-Fi, simply connect your devices using the SSID and password that's printed on top of the adapter. One thing to note is that if the power line LED light is blinking, this indicates that the signal strength isn't very good, so it's probably worth trying a different power outlet at this stage. Now having a separate SSID isn't always very helpful, but thankfully the AV600 kit actually uh, has a Wi-Fi sync feature that allows you to create a unified Wi-Fi network throughout your entire home. So if you want to go down this route instead, first start by pressing the WPS button that's found on top of your router. Again, within two minutes, press the Wi-Fi button that's found on the front of the larger adapter, again for one second. It's not very clear which this button is, but you'll find it just to the left of the printed Wi-Fi logo that's on the front of the adapter. The Wi-Fi LED light should start to blink and then remain solid when the Wi-Fi settings have been copied over. Should you come to add more adapters in the future, you simply need to plug them in and pair them with the existing adapter to join them to the power line network and the Wi-Fi settings will automatically sync over. Right, so that's everything set up. Let's take a look at some of the results that I found when I did my testing. So to test the power line adapters, I performed four speed tests using four different connection types. Ethernet, Wi-Fi, power line Ethernet, and power line Wi-Fi. Let's take a look at each of these individually and then compare them all together. Starting with Ethernet, with my device connected directly to my router, I got a ping of 13 milliseconds, a 55.19 megabits per second download, and a 13.44 megabits per second upload. Then connected to the Wi-Fi network that originates from the router itself, I got a ping of 60 milliseconds, a 57.69 megabits per second download, 
and a 12.97 megabits per second upload. Next, I connected my device to the power line adapter with an ethernet cable and got a ping of 15 milliseconds, a 51.23 megabits per second download, and a 13.38 megabits per second upload. And finally, connecting to the power line's dedicated SSID, I got a ping of 14 milliseconds, a 43.55 megabits per second download, and a 13.35 megabits per second upload. Okay, so looking at the results, the ping response times were pretty similar, ranging from 12 milliseconds up to 16 milliseconds, which is what I pretty much expected. Now, the download speeds were interesting. Yes, the power line adapters were slower than using Ethernet and Wi Fi, but not by a huge amount. I did expect it to be considerably less when compared with Ethernet and Wi Fi. Speaking of Wi Fi, I was very surprised to see the download speed to be faster than when using regular Ethernet. Now I am sitting very close to my router, but I still didn't expect it to be that bit faster. So looking at the upload speeds now, very similar results across the board. The Powerline Wi-Fi connection did provide the fastest upload speeds, even being a little bit quicker than using regular Ethernet. But the differences were very marginal, so I think it's safe to assume that the upload speed across all four connection types was pretty much the same. It is really nice to see the Powerline adapters hold their own, and how connecting to them really isn't that dissimilar to being connected using regular ethernet, which you would expect to provide the best performance. Now I'm gonna to have to do a little bit more testing with the AV600 kit, but from what I've found so far, I'm really impressed. They took literally a minute to get unboxed, plugged in and paired together. I didn't face any connectivity issues whatsoever, and getting my devices connected to the Powerline network really was plain sailing. Now something I want you to keep in mind is that the overall performance of a Powerline network is heavily influenced by the quality of the electrical wiring found within the walls. So don't go ahead and get a Powerline uh, network kit and then expect to see exactly the same performance as I do. That being said, from what I've seen so far, I would recommend getting the TP-Link AV600 kit. They're relatively affordable to buy. Certainly the performance I've seen has been very good. And the fact that the extender includes Wi-Fi is a very nice bonus. A lot of power line adapters will only provide an Ethernet connection, which does limit you somewhat. So if you want to check out the AV600 kit for yourself, I'll leave an Amazon affiliate link in the description box below for you. So I really hope you enjoyed this one, guys. If you did, it'd be great if you could drop it a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and make sure you ring that bell to turn on notifications. If you haven't already, be sure to pay a visit over to homenetworkgeek.com where I have a ton of articles that cover absolutely everything home networking. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.